Okay, I'm here in uh, Townsville. It's uh, uh, in June here, June 11th. And um, I'm just talking to Jenny Sterling, who's a Green, a Queensland Green spokesperson. Hi, Jenny. Hello, how are uh, you? Okay, thank you. And I saw your article in the paper today about the US bases, and I wondered if you want to explain first a little bit about these bases. First of all, I want to say that um, we're absolutely supportive of um, our friendship with America. Our concern is that um, by having US bases in Australia, we start to erode Australian sovereignty. And I understand that uh, Americans are very keen about their own sovereignty. They fought very hard for it. Well, Australians have fought hard too for our own sovereignty in a different way. And, uh, and we're very keen to protect our identity as a sovereign nation, an independent nation that acts out of its own interests rather than always being at the, uh, the pointy end of the stick for other nations' agendas. Okay, so um, can you explain, can you give a few details about what the, the US plans are, just very well, briefly? from our understanding, uh, there's a major reconceptualization about um, America's defense priorities. Um, I read the other day that by 2020, the US fleet expects to have 60% of its total arm power uh, in, the, in the Asia Pacific area. Um, we've been told in The Australian, which is our premier paper, that uh, there are three places in Australia, Stirling in Western Australia, Darwin in the Northern Territory, which is up there near the um, top of Australia, and Townsville on the east coast of Australia have been singled out as places where they'd like to have bases. And I'm very um, opposed to having bases, US bases in Australia. We already have, uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, 200 Marines in Darwin, and we see, see that as a thin edge of the wedge. Um, so there are all sorts of reasons why we don't want to have US bases, and uh, this may be hard for people to hear, but statistics like there are 55,000 fatherless children in Manila in the Philippines as a result of um, liaisons with US soldiers, and these children have been left with their mothers or on the streets or whatever. Um, that's an unhappy thing. Um, we also know that in places like Okinawa and Guam, they've had dreadful problems with, um, with behaviour of some of the, the servicemen in terms of rape and, uh, and assaults. And the, the sad thing is that these people are never held accountable in the country where they do these assaults. They get sent home and they don't face trial. Now, this is an abrogation of, of, of just law. It's, it's against natural justice. And so this is the track record of... Um, of the US Navy and uh, while most people are law-abiding citizens it's the few that aren't that uh, make it bad for everybody else. Yeah also do you think given um, like the, there's a similar situation in Eastern Europe with these missiles the US wants to put in this Eastern Europe claiming a defense against Iran which is of course increasing tensions with Russia do you think that uh, American foreign policy which isn't popular even with a lot of Americans also could threaten your relationships well, here we, with Asians? China is a great trading partner of Australia and we are situated in Southeast Asia and in a sense, in a geopolitical sense, Australia is part of Southeast Asia. So it makes sense to make friends with those people and as we have seen, uh, the US has a preponderance for relying on its uh, technological might and uh, and quite frankly, it's, uh, it sets itself up for conflict by those kinds of installations. The Australian foreign policy has also shifted uh, in step with American foreign policy. So now we're bringing all our major uh, military bases up from the southern half of Australia, which historically they were settled down there where the major population centres are. They're bringing them up north. And Townsville already has the largest military base in northern Australia. And we're set to see many more people come here. So I think that um, that's appropriate if that's what the government of the day wants to do, but it means that we defend ourselves. We have a defence force that should defend Australian interests, Australian territories, not be involved in conflicts around the world as a result of an imbalanced relationship between the American um, military might and Australia's desire to be good friends. It shouldn't be said in terms like that. So what we're talking about here is boundaries. What are appropriate boundaries? And I think it gets down to that idea that Australia has its own forces in its own territory stationed there. And if the governments of the day decide they want to act in accord with the United States government, that's a decision for that time. But it shouldn't be almost like a, um, 
sort of a preconceived idea that it will automatically happen because they have bases in Australia. Okay, and uh, I was wondering, what's the general feeling about them? Do you have any idea in the general mood about American bases? Um, well, Australians are tired of war. We haven't lost anywhere near as many people as um, the United States have lost, but we're tired of war, and we don't want to study war no more. So it's cost us an awful lot in terms of people coming back um, with sort of broken health. There have been a number of people that have been killed and shattered families there, but it's the legacy afterwards. You know, these people have enormous um, problems with post-traumatic stress disorder, something like 8% of the people who go over and see service. But that's only a general estimate. It's probably ongoing and unfolding. We had the terrible legacy here of Agent Orange from the Vietnam War that is still unfolding down the generations. Nothing like what happened in Vietnam, but those are the sorts of things that we don't want to be involved in. And, um, and I just think that the whole thing is an ill-conceived idea which already sets us up for conflict rather than exploring other ways to develop peaceful coexistence in Asia. Okay, um, I think you touched on that. I guess, unless you have anything, if you have anything else to add, then uh, we'll, we'll say goodbye. Do you have any other, anything else? Yes, people of Townsville welcome Americans to come and visit us. We've got <coughs> lots of wonderful things here to see, um, also including the Great Barrier Reef. We've got lots of wonders here. We want to keep them and preserve them. We want to do that through healthy relationships. We invite the people of Southeast Asia to come and visit us too, and we hope to be part of a prosperous and a non-violent society. Well, that's very good, and actually I'm an English originally, I'm an American citizen, I live in uh, California, uh, and, uh, and uh, like you were saying to me earlier off, off, off the tape here, uh, that this isn't about Americans, Americans are very friendly, very generous people, it's about the foreign policy of governments and things like that. It's about what Eisenhower warned us about, it's about the industrial military complex, and that it has a gender of its own and it has an agenda that steamrolls over the top of ordinary people's desires and hopes and dreams for their lives. And if we want to change that, we have to say this far and no more. Thanks a lot then.